nitrogen. So nitrogen is an element that belongs in group 5 of the periodic table. It has an atomic number of 7. Okay, what do we mean by this? This simply means that it has 7 protons in its atoms and therefore has 7 electrons. Remember the number of protons is always equal to the number of electrons in any atom. So 7 protons, 7 electrons. If you arrange the electrons into energy levels, you end up having an electron configuration of 2, 5. Now, nitrogen exists in air as a gaseous element. Now, it is in form of diatomic molecules. Okay, what do we mean by diatomic molecules? This simply means that you're going to have two nitrogen atoms covalently bonded with each other to form a molecule that is described as diatomic. Now, nitrogen is the most abundant gas in the atmosphere. It comprises of 78% by volume of the atmospheric air. So in our lesson today, what we're going to do is, number one is that we are going to discuss how to prepare nitrogen. How do you prepare nitrogen in the lab? What if you want to isolate nitrogen from air? Can you do so and how? So this is what we're going to discuss. And lastly, we are going to discuss the physical and chemical properties of nitrogen. So in short, we are going to have an amazing time. Be sure to stay tuned. Let's dive into it. Now, laboratory preparation of nitrogen gas. If you want to prepare nitrogen gas in the lab, how do you go about it? All you need to have is ammonium nitrite and heat. That's it. But there's a catch to it. Ammonium nitrite is not stored in the lab. And the reason for this is because it's quite unstable. So you need to freshly prepare ammonium nitrite in order to obtain nitrogen gas. So how do you go about it? You need to have ammonium chloride and sodium nitrite solutions. So essentially two solutions. One solution of sodium nitrite and the other of ammonium chloride. Now when these two are mixed, what will happen is that they are going to react with one another, leading to the formation of sodium chloride and ammonium nitrite. Ding! There we have our reagent. Now guys, I want you to look at this reaction and tell me what is the name of this reaction. I'm going to give you a hint. It contains two words and both words start with the letter D. Double decomposition it is. Now moving on, ammonium nitrite that has just been formed is going to decompose on heating in order to form nitrogen gas and steam. So how are you going to collect the nitrogen gas formed? Now nitrogen is collected over water. So this method of collection is known as overwater method. You're literally collecting the gas over water. Now, gases that can be collected through this method need to be either completely insoluble in water or slightly soluble in water, such as in the case of nitrogen gas. And this, of course, makes sense. If you're collecting a gas and you're using overwater method and the gas is soluble in water, are you going to end up having a gas or a solution at the end? Make it make sense, okay? So this method is only used for gases that are insoluble in water or slightly soluble. Now, so nitrogen fits this criteria. If you want to collect dry nitrogen gas that is free from moisture, what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to pass it through a YouTube containing concentrated sulfuric 6 acid. This will act as a drying agent. So it will dry the nitrogen gas and then you can collect it using a syringe. Now, guys. I want you to make a note of the following precaution. If you're preparing a gas, any gas, by the way, that involves number one, heating, and number two, collection over water, then what you need to do is you need to remove the delivery tube from the water before stopping heating. Now, the reason for this is because this will prevent sucking back of water since gases expand when heated. So this, ladies and gentlemen, is the laboratory preparation of nitrogen gas. Simple and sweet. Moving on, what if you want to obtain nitrogen gas, but instead of preparing it, you simply want to obtain it from the air? Remember, air is a mixture of gases with its main component being nitrogen gas. So if you want to isolate nitrogen gas from the various components of air, you can also do so. And this is the procedure you're supposed to follow. So number one is that you're going to run water into the aspirator. So the purpose of this is that the water enters the aspirator, displaces the air upwards. You know, it pushes the air from the aspirator 
into the wash bottle which will contain concentrated sodium hydroxide. Now the purpose of this is to absorb carbon four oxide. Now you can actually use concentrated sodium hydroxide or concentrated potassium hydroxide. Either of these will serve the same purpose. So it absorbs carbon four oxide. Essentially, it reacts with the carbon four oxide to form a carbonate and water as seen. Now the remaining air that is now free from carbon four oxide then passes into the combustion tube containing heated copper tannins. Now copper tannins are simply small pieces of copper metal. So these have been heated. Now when the remaining part of air is passed across it, what do you think will react with the heated copper tannins? Yes, oxygen gas. Remember the active part of air is oxygen gas. So oxygen will react with the copper to form copper two oxide. Now, what observation are you going to see? You're going to find that the brown copper tannins will turn black. Why? Because the compound that is formed, which in this case is copper 2 oxide, is a black solid. The remaining gas, which mostly consists of nitrogen gas, will then be collected over water. I repeat, the reason why this is done is because nitrogen is slightly soluble in water. Now, I want to make the following observations. The nitrogen gas that is collected in this process is not going to be totally pure. It will contain some impurities, mostly in the form of the noble gases. You know, argon, helium and such. These gases are going to be there and you cannot remove them using chemical reactions because they're chemically unreactive. So what are you going to do to them? Anyways, so nitrogen gas is not going to be pure and as such, it's going to be denser than the one that is obtained from the decomposition of ammonium nitrate. That was pure. This contains impurities and will therefore be denser. Now, there is a third method whereby you can obtain nitrogen gas. This is a method that is usually done on a large scale. It is done through a process known as fractional distillation of liquid air. Now, I'm not going to get into this. I'm not going to discuss this in this video because I already have a video on this. Be sure to check it out. Now, let's proceed to the physical properties of nitrogen gas. Now, nitrogen gas is a colorless, odorless and tasteless gas. Now, guys, this is a dumb moment, you know, like, yeah, we know because nitrogen is the main component of air. So if nitrogen had a color, a certain taste or a certain odor, we will be able to know. But since it doesn't, yeah, makes sense. Anyways, another is that nitrogen gas is a neutral gas. It has no effect whatsoever on moist litmus papers. So no effect on moist blue or red litmus papers. Now, another is that nitrogen is slightly less dense than air, slightly so. And it's slightly soluble in water. And that is the reason why it can be collected over water. Moving on to the chemical properties of nitrogen. Number one, combustion. Does it support combustion? No, it doesn't. In fact, the only gas that does so is oxygen. So nitrogen does not support combustion, neither does it burn. In fact, nitrogen is chemically unreactive under ordinary conditions of temperature and pressure. This simply means that if you have normal or room temperatures and pressure, nitrogen is unreactive. It does not react. And the reason for this is because of the strong triple covalent bond that is present between the two nitrogen atoms. Okay, okay, that's quite a lot. When I introduce nitrogen, I mentioned that in the atmosphere, nitrogen exists as a diatomic molecule, whereby you have two nitrogen atoms covalently bonded with one another. Now, the type of covalent bond that is present is actually a triple covalent bond. And these are very, very strong and require a lot of energy in order to break. So you're going to need energy, a lot of energy to break these bonds so that the nitrogen atoms can then be free to react. So in most cases, you find that nitrogen is simply inert. You know, it's unreactive. This does not mean that nitrogen does not react at all. It does actually. It reacts with some substances under certain special conditions. Let's give a few examples. Oxygen, nitrogen and oxygen will react with one another when they are heated at high temperatures. This will lead to the formation of a compound called nitrogen 2 oxide. Hydrogen, yes. Nitrogen and hydrogen will react with one another when heated in the presence of an ion catalyst and under high pressure. This will lead to formation of ammonia. And yes, you guessed it right. 
This is actually the process that is undertaken in the harbor process. You know industrial manufacture of ammonia? Then yes. I'm going to start sounding like a parrot, but let me just put it out there. Yes, I also have another video on the harbor process. If you're interested, check it out. Now, metals. Nitrogen will also react with the highly reactive metals. You know, mostly metals from group 1 and group 2. Now, when these metals are heated, in the presence of nitrogen, the two react together, leading to the formation of a metal nitride. For example, sodium will react with nitrogen to form sodium nitride. Magnesium with nitrogen gas, magnesium nitride. Calcium with nitrogen gas, calcium nitride. And there we have it. So what essentially is done is that you're going to take the metal, place it on a deflagrating spoon, heat it, and then place it in a jar containing nitrogen gas. This brings about the reaction. Now, if you were to take the metal nitride that is formed, for example, magnesium nitride, add some water to it, it will react giving off ammonia gas and magnesium hydroxide. Now, the gas that is formed, which is ammonia in this case, will turn a moist red litmus paper to blue. In fact, girls, if you were to carry out a practical and you find that a certain gas is produced which turns red litmus paper blue, in most cases, that is simply ammonia gas. Now, the reason why these metals can react with nitrogen gas is because the heat that is produced by the burning metals Remember, we first heated the metals before placing them in a jar containing nitrogen gas. So the heat produced by the burning metals is strong enough to break the triple bond in the nitrogen molecules. So this frees up the nitrogen atoms, allowing them to react and combine with the metals to form nitrides. And there we have it.